So um, how did you discover JoJo's book? So I actually got sent the script first by Blueprint Pictures, Pete Shani and my producers and read the script, loved it, just needed to do it. And then found out it was a book, read the book. I, my mind was blown. I was like, how do I have never heard this? How have I never heard of this author? She's brilliant. And then just started reading her books and I met her and she was incredible. So smart and talented. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got to know Jojo. And I want to talk a little bit about the music soundtrack because it takes place in the 60s. There's so many different 60s songs and artists that you could have used that are instantly recognizable, but you kind of veered away from that. So I just want to talk a little bit about your collab with the composing department to settle on what type of music to use for this piece, because it flips flops between um, 1965 and present day. Yeah. Um, so all the songs just... I, like when I got the script and I started breaking it down and anytime I'm working on any project, I start with a playlist and I just go through, you know, I love music. I have, um, I mean, I use Spotify, <laughs> just, you know, it's always like discovery, discovery, discovery. I get really, um, I go deep into deep dives in music and I'm looking at albums and following threads. And so that's kind of how it happened. And anytime I do that, I pull songs um, that like the Doris Troy song, like that's, something that I'd never heard and then just came across. I'm like, oh my God, this song's amazing. And so you set that aside and you're like, sometime I'm going to use that song. It's really good. And, and so I have kind of a database of songs that may not be the most popular song, but just feel so emotionally right, you know, for various times. And so that's kind of how it started. And then my composer, Daniel Hart, He's just brilliant. I've known him for years. He's been my husband's composer and he just, you know, we went back and forth with the score and, and I told him I wanted something that didn't feel like wallpaper that had more of like a hand in telling the story. And he just nailed it. It was amazing. Yeah, he totally did. I was all into that score. I'm like, oh, that music. Sometimes it would take me out. I had to rewind and go, oh, I love that. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? It's terrible and great all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was the decision to cast completely different actors as B and J toward the latter part of the film instead of just aging up Callum and um, Shailene? I mean, yeah, so we had a lot of discussions about it, actually. We went back and forth. We met with, you know, makeup designers and um, and talked about computer, you know, um, like changing them with the computer and um and at the end of the day, we saw a couple of things. We saw an opportunity to work with these two older actors that are just, you know, incredible and, and brought their own story to this. And I thought that was special and, and something um, that was an opportunity, you know, to, to, to work with two incredible new actors. And then also sometimes I just didn't want the makeup or the dissection of the makeup to become the focus of the story. I just wanted you to just get lost in who these people were, just extend your imagination and not worry about like, oh, is the makeup good enough? You know, how do they look? Do you see the, you know, do you see the seams? So, yeah. I love that. It took me a minute to figure out that it wasn't them because the older gentleman really looks a lot like Callum. He looks so much like Callum that I thought, is that Callum? That they <laughs> And then it took me a minute to figure it out. So that was a beautiful thing. Well, Augustine, that is my time. It was so lovely to talk to you. I hope that we get that opportunity to do it again real soon. Me too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.